Hi, this is Alexis from the Wing Surfer Magazine. We're here at AWSI 2021 with Mr. Robbie Nash, and you've got some amazing wings. I mean, you guys were at the forefront of this. Yeah, we've pretty much been there since the beginning, having a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. Spending a lot of time on the water. Uh, some of it working, some of it, tough, you know, developing. Tested. Always changing. <laughs> but uh, most of it playing and just having fun with the gear, which is the main thing. You've got some great, you've got three great looking wings this year. Yeah, we've got the, the Wing Surfer, S26 Wing Surfer, which is the third generation of the original Wing Surfer. And that's kind of our all around do everything wing. And as the sport evolves and progresses, it's clearly going in a bunch of different directions. You got hard booms and hard handles and soft handles and long handles and multiple short handles and big leading edges and small leading edges and uh, you know tons of power, uh, canopy tension, no canopy tension. A lot of people have no idea what any of that does. Uh, kind of getting lost in the shuffle at the moment of the day. <laughs> kind of confusing. <laughs> it can be. And you kind of have to navigate your way through figuring out what parameters create what effect on the wing. Because you might think, oh, it's got to be rigid and stiff and camber induced and canopy tension. Those are all good things. Not necessarily. It depends what you're looking for. Um, so the S26 is designed to be an all-around do-everything wing, really light in the hands. Uh, it makes decent power but not tons of power because in foiling, power eventually becomes the enemy. Yep. Right? You, you need, don't want to fight it. Yeah, you need power to get up and going and then you kind of want the wing to disappear and be fingertip light in your hands because you don't need a lot of grunt to keep the foil going. And so there's this trend in the industry at the moment, power, power, power. It's like, okay, well, once you get up, the power is kind of working against you a lot of the time, unless you're racing and using a huge wing, and that's not really the direction most people are going with wing surfing right now, or wing foiling right now. It's getting out there and cruising and, you know, flowing and... Having fun. Having fun and learning the sport, and riding swells, riding waves. And so, you know, the future, we're going to have a lot of different types of wings. You can have race wings and semi-rigid wings and on and on and on. But for the moment, you know, trying to focus on keeping it as simple and accessible and fun as possible. So nothing rigid at all, all soft handles, not a giant leading edge, not tons of rigidity and power, it still breathes. So the S26 has a lot of range. You know, you can use one wing in a broad range. The stiffer you make it, the more powerful you make it, the more rigid you make the wing, the narrower the wind range. But great performance in a narrow range, and then you're going to get overpowered. You start to have handling issues. You're fighting it. Yeah, they get unruly. They'll backwind you. Uh, and so this is designed to be very pliable, give you a lot of performance in a lot of different conditions. It's still, you know, even though I'm, a, I would hope to say, a pretty decent wing foiler at this point, still my favorite wing. Uh, so I like this because it's a little flatter, a little less power and grunt once you do get going, and then just very pliable. So it's still multi-handle. Uh, we have removable Y handles for those that want Y handles. If you don't want them, you take them off. You can bridge your handles for a transition handle. Yep. You know, using one of the removable Y handles for that. Uh, pretty good size windows still. You know, in this, especially for people that are riding in crowded areas, you know, that maybe aren't that good, you get in a spot with a bunch of wings and windsurfers and kiters and stuff, it's kind of good to see what's coming up at you from downwind. Nothing like a barge sneaking up on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of people say, oh, I don't need windows, I don't use them anyway. I'm kind of lost without windows. We have options now without windows as well for those diehards, but I think even a small window makes a really big difference. Yeah. This has a pretty big window, so you can really see everything. Um, so great. All around wing, flexible, you get some twist when you get powered up so you can carry the wing into a broader wind range. But it's not going to give you a ton of sheet in and go. I don't see sheet in and go being necessary for a long time once you learn how to load your foil, which doesn't take most people that long. You know, you can kind of load that front foil with a small wing and then get going and it all kind of disappears. The very beginning, sure, if you weigh 200 pounds and you're sheeting in and waiting to take off like an airplane, you're going to need some grunt. But that stage of the sport doesn't last very long. That all. long. So there's really quick learning curve in this sport, which is awesome. Uh, so from that we go to the Matador, and the Matador is again, it's, it's an all-around wing, you know, it's not super specialized, slightly different plan form. It's got a more dihedral, 
so it floats in neutral a little better. Uh, it's designed to go upwind really well and then be flagged downwind really well. So great wave riding wing, great swell. Good balance. Wing. Really good balance. You can flag this thing and it'll just sit in neutral behind you really easily. It won't tend to want to roll side to side, which a lot of wings do. Uh, it's got a little bit more rigid handles, but still multiple handles. But they're firmer, they're stiffer in the hand. It's got more power. It's got a stiffer leading edge and a stiffer strut per size, so a little more rigidity. Bigger guys tend to like it. You know, if you're big and you're trying to ride a wing overpowered, the S26 can be a little bit pliable for some people. The Matador is definitely more rigid. It feels stiffer in the hand and a lot more front hand pressure. So there's more grunt, more immediate sheet in and go power with this. Not so much that you're fighting it, you know, when you're when you're riding, but you're going to tend to want to ride a smaller wing. This is designed for designed for someone to be able to use the smallest wing possible and still go and have fun and you know not have to carry a big wing to get going. Again, the removable Y handles, small windows, and I say in the beginning that this is more a not an expert or advanced wing, but a wing for someone that's maybe better because these windows are really only functional when you're good enough to get that thing right in front of you going upwind. And then once you get upwind and you're flagging, obviously you don't need to get it out of the way. Yeah, but if you're riding like this, if you're just getting going, you're not going to see much, right? Because the windows are up around the strut. But again, there's a lot of debate of how important is a window anyway, right? Who's looking through it, who's not? I like to have at least a little bit of window there. For people that don't want a window, and there's a lot of people that don't want a window, we've now got the Matador LT. And so the LT takes the Matador's basic platform and removes the window. No removable Y handles, so as lightweight as possible. Really nice, light canopy, very reactive. And instead of multiple handles, we've got three longer handles. So you can slide your hands instead of having to sort of creep your way from one handle to the other. I love the multiple handles, but I'm one of those guys that's sort of reluctant to change. Yeah. You know, and maybe it's just because I've gotten so used to them winging for three and a half years now with the multiple handles. Most people these days get on these and really like them. Uh, same power as the Matador. A slightly different sort of shape and dynamic on the strut. So the power is a little bit more balanced to the, you know, between the hands, but very, very similar to the Matador. Basically just a lighter weight, more streamlined version of a Matador with three handles instead of multiple handles. And again, no Y handle and still very, very neutral flagging. Yep. Great for wave riding and bump riding and whatnot uh, with a bunch of sheet in and go power for, for getting upwind. Awesome, now I know you went into specifics, but I know there's guys that are really, really, really techy and all the different sizes of each one of the wings and all that stuff, where can they go? Uh, website, nash.com. Uh, the wing surfer comes in a 2-2, 2 8 3 6 4 6 5 3 6 0 oh, 6 8 the matador comes in a 3 4 and a 5 the lt comes in a 3 4 5 and a 6 uh, and obviously the future is going to be full of all kinds of stuff i mean we're trying to be quite flexible we've changed the way we're doing our, our production and our planning and we're not marrying ourselves to an entire season product line anymore for winging because the sport is changing so fast. So for example, the S26 production is pretty much it's gone. sold out. <laughs> Congratulations. If you can find one, get your hands on it. We're already on to the uh, MK4 for the wing surfer, which is in development. But for now, we've got the, the Matador and the LT, which really cover where the sport's at right now. Great all around performance. Not super rigid, not too flexible and pliable. And again, you're gonna get all kinds of tech talk from the different brands. Um, I think the main thing is feel. Yep. Not, oh, but look, it's it's not tension while it's on. You gotta kick the tires. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't look at the color of the tires. Look at how they perform. Exactly. And uh, again, that's the beauty of this sport. It's still in its infancy, but the infancy is fun, huh? It's, yeah. oh, it's a blast. Don't get too tied up in the tech, especially if you're just getting into the sport. 
don't be buying stuff that you know you're not going to actually enjoy because it's targeting something that's a little too far down the road in terms of steps fast learning curve in this sport but it's not instantaneous so you know even with wings and foils like if I have sure. friends that get into it regardless of the way, I tell them Jet 1650, start on that. And they'll go, oh, what about the HA? I go in the shop and everybody says I need a high aspect wing. It's like, well, you probably will at some stage. You gotta crawl before you run. Don't start on it. You know, it's gonna make that beginning stage less enjoyable. And the whole thing is to have as much fun as fast as possible. You want this to be fun in the first 10 minutes on the water. You want it to be fun the end of the first day. You want it to be fun at the end of the first month and not create it where it's challenging for, you know, in the beginning. Make it fun. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, welcome. Thank you.